for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory to His name There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name I am so wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within There at the cross where He took me in Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory to His name There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin questions on that, you can talk to Miss Joni Hamby, and uh, we've got Vacation Bible School coming up, be a week from tomorrow, June the 5th through the 9th, and it's going to go from 8.30 in the morning to 12 noon, and the theme this year is Keepers of the Kingdom, so be in prayer about Vacation Bible School, be a lot of kids here to learn about Jesus, and just be with the teachers and the helpers, Henson family is going to be coming to Calico, it says June the 24th. 
at the Little Country Church at 6 p.m. And then here on Saturday night, July the 15th, uh, it's going to be the Dixie Echoes in concert here at church, okay? And our children's camp is coming up, the 2023 children's camp is coming up there. It's July the 10th through the 12th. And we're also doing the Dale Stone Scholarship Fund. We all remember Dale and the, what the work that Dale put in here at the church and the, with our kids and children. And so we've got a scholarship fund. So if you'd like to give to that for some kid, maybe they don't have the money to attend that, that week, uh, there'll be a, out in the front there, there'll be a, a jar or something to put your money in for the Dale Stone Scholarship Fund. All right. Any other announcements we need to make this morning? Okay, if they're not, do we have any prayer requests we need to mention this morning? Okay. Alonda's going, there's going to be a group go to Peru on a mission trip June the 1st. Remember her and that group as they go down there. Not anyone else at this time. Brother George Mayfield, would you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. At the cross. <clears throat> The 
We're going to do a couple songs for you this morning. Just sing with us. Stay 
this morning and to be able to worship you and to be able to worship Jesus, that beautiful name. It is the grace that blows all fear away, Lord. I pray this morning that you take our fears away and that you allow us to worship you as you intended this morning. Please open our hearts for us to hear what you would have us hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. got a video here we want you to watch this morning. Sometime back I received in the name of our country the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of servicemen, for we're never quite good enough to them. Not really, we can't be. Because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. And so when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole, and all we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers, they gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them and what they did and why they had to be brave for us.
this Memorial Day weekend, it is a time for us to remember. And maybe you have a family member that uh, gave the ultimate sacrifice for our nation, for our freedom. Or some friend that you had. And I want to give you an opportunity to stand up and give their names so that we can remember them today. Is there someone? I know Brother Jim Klingerbeard always stood up and told us about his brother. And we remembered his brother. Someone else have a loved one that gave their life during a war or for our country. Ms. Gladys. I want us to do. I want us to all stand, and uh, we're going to honor all of those who gave their life for our freedom, and we're going to play daps. Dr. Wright, lead us in a prayer, please. Lord, we thank you this day for your love and mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you that just as you died to save us from sin, that there have been men and women for over 200 years that gave their life that we can live in peace and freedom. Lord, their families lost them, we lost them, and many of them never had families of their own. Their Cheryl goes in and they serve, and they gave up. Yes. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them, bless their families. Pray that you would guide our people there, that we would be thankful of both the eternal and the earthly blessings that we enjoy in this country, and know that it all comes from you, Lord. 
Look at you. You will lead us to the river of destruction. Thy report, the Lord has never forgiven. Yeah, freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We want to go ahead and dismiss for Children's Church at this time. Children's Church. We're thankful for our band today. Kelt has shown us another side of himself today. He played the drums today. All right. We're finding out he's a multi-talented person. We appreciate all our band members. Amen. Memorial Day has been uh, set aside so we may never forget. Never forget the sacrifice that others have made for our freedom. And men and women have given their all so that we can enjoy the freedoms we have. And so they shall forever be in our thoughts and their families shall forever be in our prayers. And because of their sacrifice that they've made, we have memorials. We have great walls with their names on them. As a matter of fact, there are memorials all across our nation, from our capital, even on courthouse lawns, all across our nation, memorials to those who have given their all for us, for their country. Eleven of those memorials are considered to be famous war memorials. And when you think about it, though, there are many different types of memorials in our cemeteries. We see headstones, and we go there and we read the names of our loved ones that have been etched into granite with the purpose of remembering them and not forgetting them. Even for generations to come. And when we see those names etched in granite, Our minds are filled with memories, precious memories. These people mean something to us. They're special to us, and we want them to be remembered. Amen? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 14. We're going to be looking at verses 3 through 9. Today I want us to look into the Scriptures and see one such person and what they did for Jesus, he wanted, Jesus wanted to be sure that they would be remembered. He said, Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. What this woman did for Jesus, it was so great that Jesus said, I'll often think of you, and that he wanted the entire world to know what she had done for him. This woman whose name is Mary, she's found three times in the gospel story, and each time we see her name in the gospel story, do you know where she's at? She's at the feet of Jesus every time. She's at the feet of Jesus each and every time we see her mentioned in Scripture. I believe Mary had a close 
fellowship with the Lord as she sat at his feet and she listened to his words. I believe she's a good model for all of us to follow. Now, this Mary is not the mother of Jesus. This is a different Mary. But she is a wonderful model for us to follow because she finds herself over and over and over again at the feet of Jesus Christ. Oh, that we would be found at the feet of Jesus. Oh, that this church would be a memorial for Christ. Amen. And with that in mind, let's stand and read our text. If you have it, say, I have it, Pastor. Mark chapter 14, 3 through 9. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask, very costly, oil of spikenard, Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. Now, if you remember, uh, Bethany was the uh, the hometown of Lazarus. You know who Lazarus is. And it was also the hometown of Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. So just to kind of give you uh, a little insight of, of where we're talking about here. And, and by the way, Martha, Mary's sister, was also present at this meal. So let's read on verse 4. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish you may do them good. But me you do not have always. Verse 8. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached... In the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day and this time set aside that we could come and collectively worship you. Lord, I pray a blessing on those who are here today. Lord, those who are watching via social media. Lord, I pray for those who are not here today. Lord, I I pray that you would bless this time and anoint it. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Today I want to bring you a message that I preached here back in 2017. And as a matter of fact, I preached this message back in 2012 too. So about every five years we're looking at, I preach this very message. I do go back and make some changes along uh, the way. But I preached this message five years ago, and it's entitled, Being a Memorial for Christ. Being a Memorial for Christ. Today I want you to notice five ways that Mary made an impact in the mind of Jesus Christ. Because he himself declared that what she did was going to be included in Scripture. He said this, that it would be included in Scripture as a memorial to her. The first thing we notice about Mary and what she did that impacted the mind of Jesus Christ is found in verse 8. We see that Mary made an impact because, first of all, she gave... What she had. Look at verse 8. Jesus says, She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. You see, I believe that Mary gave what she had in her heart. I believe Mary gave 
the, uh, what she had in the power of her hands. She did according to her ability. Martha, her sister, was a multi-talented person. She was cooking and doing all these other things. But Mary did what she could. Let me tell you something this morning. God doesn't expect you to give or do more than you can. Amen. But I tell you what he does expect. He expects you to do all you can. Amen. Amen. You say, well, Brother Kevin, I can't teach. I can't preach. Brother Kevin, I can't do this and I can't do that. I can't play the drums and the guitar and other things like Kel can. I can't do these things like you and these other people can. But there is something you can do. Amen. You can pray. Amen. You can be faithful. Amen. You can encourage. Amen. They are things you can do. And I want you to know, Mary might not have been a multi-talented person, but Mary did what she could. And that's just what that's what God expects from you and I, to do what we can. Amen. Some people have the ad attitude... Well, I can't do much. It won't mean much. I'll just, I'll just sit here, stay here, and won't do anything. Amen. That's the mindset of a lot of people. Mary did what she could. Can that be said about you? Can that be said about you? Well, he did what he could. For the Lord. She did what she could for the Lord. Secondly, in verse 5, we see the second thing. She gave without regard to the cost. Look at verse 5. For it, for it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. Now, if you look in John's gospel, the story in John's gospel we see that the ointment that she had, this Zweignert, it was a pound, about a pound of Zweignert. And a Roman pound was not 16 ounces like we, our pound is 16 ounces. A Roman pound was 12 ounces. So it was 12 ounces of Zweignert. Now, Zweignert, we could call it a heavenly gift because it only grew at high elevations. It had to be like from 11,000 to 17,000 feet is where you would find this stuff. And, and it was very expensive. In biblical times, they would use it uh, in wounds to, to help the healing, to speed the he healing up, and, and it would help skin conditions. It was a very sought-after ointment. That's why it was so expensive, as a matter of fact. What she had was worth about a year's wages. About a year's wages. And Mary gave it freely. Not a drop at a time. Well, this is, this is, this is expensive stuff. Now, I'm just going to put a little drop on you here or there. No, that's not what she did, amen. She gave it freely. She poured it all on Jesus without any thought. Of what the cost was. Listen, she was expressing the fact that nothing is as precious, nothing is as precious as Jesus Christ. Amen. And nothing is more important than Jesus Christ. Mary gave 100% realizing the greatest value of life is not to be found in material things, but it's found in Jesus Christ. Matthew 6 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be, also, Mary not only gave what she could, but she gave the best that she had. Amen. 
She gave the best that she had. Are we giving the best to Jesus Christ? Are we giving the best to Jesus Christ? Or are we like the little boy who would walk to Sunday school every Sunday? And one particular Sunday, his mom said, Now, here, son, here's two quarters. And uh, what I want you to do, I want you to put one of those quarters in the offering plate. And I want you to take the other quarter, that's for you, and you stop by and get you an ice cream comb on the way back from church. And so the little boy was so happy, he had two quarters in his hand. He was rubbing them together, and he was walking down the hill, coming to First Baptist Church, walking down the hill, and, and, and he was playing with those quarters. And as he played with those quarters, he lost grip on one of them, and they fell and hit the road and rolled into a, 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 a cupboard like where the drain, the water would drain on the side of the road. And he looked down, and he found out it was gone. He looked up at the Lord and said, Well, Lord, I hate to tell you, but that was your quarter. <laughs> we should be giving our best to Jesus. Amen? Mary gave her best, and she didn't hold anything back. Let me tell you something. Jesus is worth it. Amen? Jesus is worth it. Give him your best. Do all that you can. Amen? And then the third thing about Mary, the third thing, she gave without regard to others' opinion. <laughs> she gave without regard of others' opinion. Look at verse 4. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant all wasted? Mm. Must have been some Baptist folks there, right? You know, in John's account, in John's account, we find out it was Judas that said this. In John's account, Judas is the one that said that. He was the one that was filled with anger about Mary wasting this oil, he said. And many times, let me tell you something, people will stop working for Jesus because of something somebody else says or does. Mm. You'll get your feelings hurt. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you want to get your feelings hurt, just start coming to church. Amen? Come on. Amen? If you're looking for a place to get your feelings hurt, just start coming to church. And it ought not be that way, amen? It ought not be that way. But I've been coming to church my whole life, even nine months before I was born, amen? And I know something. If you come to church with your feelings on your shoulder, somebody's going to knock them off, amen? Somebody's going to say something or do something. I remember when I was just a youngin, sitting back there about where Kelt is, there was a woman that sat in front of me. I've told you this story before. One thing I like about having an older crowd, though, I can tell the same stories over and over. Some of you will forget it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, I told you you could get your feelings hurt. Look at there. Uh-huh. What? What? Anyway. I remember <laughs> just a child, I sat back there where Kel said, and there was a woman who sat in front of me. Her name was Ethel Ainsworth. That was her, no, that was her name, Ethel Ainsworth. And I'd get up and sing. I'd sing loud as I could. I would. I was singing for Jesus. And she'd turn around and she'd say, shh, with that old mean-looking face. You're singing too loud. Quiet it down. Oh, howdy. And she turned back around. And I'm going to tell you, I respected my adults, but if there was ever one adult I wanted to hit in the back of the head, it was Ethel Ainsworth. Every Sunday she'd do it. And so what I ended up doing was I moved. Amen. I moved. I didn't quit coming to church, amen. I didn't let her get me down. I moved. I moved on the other side. And boy, I could belt it out and nobody would say anything, amen. 
She had to hear me. Amen. Let me tell you something. If you're doing what God has called you to do, if you're working for Jesus Christ, don't let somebody else damper what you're doing. Don't let somebody else throw water on your fire. Don't let somebody else take the wind out of your sails. You're doing what God's called you to do. Bless God. Do it with all that you got. Amen. And Mary came to Jesus. If she'd have had her feelings on her, on her shoulder, she'd have said, well, I'll, I'll go back to the house then. Amen? I'll take my oil and go somewhere, somewhere else. But she didn't. She gave without regards of others' opinion. You know, I thank God I didn't listen to Ethel Lane's word. Amen? Now, I love this woman. She was a Christian, and she's gone on to be with the Lord a long time. I outlived her. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I thank God I didn't listen to her. You know, there's a story in the Bible, the story of Nehemiah. And the walls of Jerusalem had been torn down. And word came to Nehemiah about the walls being torn down, and it tore his heart out. And he wanted to go and repair those walls. Matter of fact, he felt God had called him to go and repair those walls in Jerusalem. And so he was the king's cupbearer. And he went to the king, and he expressed his heart to the king. And God convicted the king. As a matter of fact, the king gave him leeway to go and said, Here, take this note with you, and anything you need, you'll get it along to get it. Amen. And Nehemiah goes, and he starts w working on the walls of Jerusalem. Just as sure as he started doing something for God, here come the devil's bunch. Amen? Now listen to me, church folks. Don't you allow the devil to use you. Amen? The devil can even use church folks. Amen? Don't let the devil use you to take the wind out of somebody else's sail. Nehemiah working on the wall. And here come old Sam Ballot. Here come old Tobiah. Amen. Here they come. Trying to stop him from working on the walls. Stop him from working on the walls. And Nehemiah said this in chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 3 and 4. So I sent messengers to them. Saying I am doing a great work. So that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? Don't listen to the world, amen. Don't listen to those trying to discourage you. If you're working for Jesus and doing what he's called you to do, do it with everything you have and don't listen to the world, amen. Jesus said in John 15, 20. Back up. That we're to do it with everything we have. And then the fourth thing. Fourthly, she gave with no thought of return. She gave with no thought of return. Philippians 3.8 says, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Let me ask you something. What's hindering you from selling out completely to Jesus Christ? Mm. Mm. What's hindering you from selling out completely? Well, Brother Kevin, I, you know, I, I got some doubts about some things. I, I got this job. My spouse, you know, my kids. What's hindering you from selling out completely to Jesus Christ? Mm. Woo. I'm tempted to meddle a little bit right here. I'm tempted to meddle now. Preacher, you've quit preaching and you've gone to meddling. We're all in it for Jesus until. Mm, mm. 
We're all in it until mm, a ball game comes up. Don't throw tomatoes. Don't do it. We're all in it for Jesus until the job calls. We're all in it for Jesus until all the day comes. Woo, preacher. I'm cutting you off right now. Everybody in social media, just cut me off. Boom, boom, boom. And I understand. Don't take me in the wrong way. We take vacations due, and, and, and it, it's a good thing. God created the family before he ever created the church. He did. And I understand spending time with your family and things. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm talking about there's people out there who look for every excuse in the book to miss church. Amen. She gave with no thought of return. You know the Bible says in Mark 8, 36, For what will it profit a man that if he gain the whole world, and what does it say? And loses his soul. Mary didn't give and use her oil on Jesus expecting anything in return. She did it because she loved him. Amen. And when we come with our talents and we come with our gifts and we come with our lives, giving them all to Jesus, when our hearts are right, we are doing it not for personal gain. We are doing it because we love Jesus. Amen. We owe everything we have to him and everything we are to him. Amen. There's coming a day in the life of every person when you realize everything you've done is going to be worthless. Except for what you've done for Jesus. And then fifthly, I believe Mary, she gave in response to what Christ gave. You see, Jesus had brought her brother Lazarus back from the dead. Remember the story, we mentioned it earlier, Lazarus. And so she was so grateful for what Jesus had done. And you know what? All that we do should be done because of what he has done for us. We were once dead just like Lazarus. Amen. We were dead spiritually. And Jesus has brought us to life if you are a Christian today. Amen. Listen, it's not the streets of gold that makes heaven heaven. It's not the walls of jasper that makes heaven heaven. It's not my loved ones that have gone on that makes heaven heaven. It's not Paul and Abraham and John and all of those Matthew and Mark that makes heaven heaven. Let me tell you what makes heaven heaven. What makes heaven heaven is Jesus is there. Amen. And even though I'm going to enjoy walking and talking around heaven with my loved ones, I'm going to enjoy talking with the saints of all. But the most important thing I want to do when I get to heaven is see Jesus. Because he died for me. Because he died for me. He's enough. He's enough for me to give my life to him and his cause. He's enough. He's enough. If Jesus is God, and he is, and if he died for me, and he did, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him including giving my all for him. In John's account, in chapter 12 of John, it says, And the house was filled with the odor of ointment. 
you know, I can just kind of sense and see in my mind as Mary was pouring the spikenard on the head of Jesus. I can just smell the aroma that he gave out. Not only could Jesus smell it, but Mary could smell it. And not only could Mary smell it, but everybody in the house could smell the precious ointment that Jesus put on Jesus. Do you know our praise is a type of ointment that we put on Jesus when we praise Jesus? When we come into this house and we praise Jesus, it's like an ointment. The ointment that Mary placed on Jesus, our praise is like that ointment on Jesus. And not only did it bless Jesus, the ointment, not only did it bless Jesus, it blessed Mary. She got it on her hands, right? Not only did it bless Jesus and Mary, but it blessed all the people in the house, even those crazy people, because they got to smell it. It was so precious. Jesus said it was the anointment of his death. Hmm. Because he knew what was coming. In closing today, as Christ was beaten with the cat of nine tails, I could only imagine that perhaps the love that Mary had shown him was still on his mind. I can imagine as he took the cross of Calvary up the hill of Golgotha, I can perhaps he thought about the love that Mary showed him by taking the most expensive thing she had, probably everything she had, and giving it to him. Her love for him perhaps were on his, was on his mind as he walked up the hill of Golgotha. What Mary could do, she did. And what she possessed, she gave. Have you given your all to Christ today? Have you given your all to Christ today? The Bible says, Jesus says, because of what she did, she would be remembered throughout the entire world. What she did would be become a memorial to her. And today here we are, thousands of years later, reading about what this woman did for Jesus. Are you a memorial for Christ today? You know, no matter what your past is, you can become a memorial for Jesus today. As we think about this weekend and as we think about this holiday coming up tomorrow, Memorial Day, we think about all those who have given their lives for us. Let us not forget the main one who gave his life for us. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus remembered us we need to remember him amen <clears throat> remember me in a Bible cracked and faded by the years Remember me In a sanctuary filled with silent prayer And age to age and all
Remember me When the color of the sunset fills the sky Remember me When you pray and tears of joy fall from your eyes And with smiles Remember me when they're old enough to teach old enough to preach old enough to Lord, a hand clap of praise today. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today. God bless you.